Let me pray before I do other things. Lord, thank you for your word. And we want to put our full attention on, on you now, Lord, as our amazing and loving Father. And we thank you, Lord, for the way you love us. You care for us. You inspire us, Lord. Thank you. Lord, let your word speak to our hearts loud and clear today. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This is our last Sunday before school holiday. And um, we are finishing our theme officially today, although other preachers and myself will continue just through the, the holidays to touch on it. But our theme has been a wonderful one. Heart momentum. Moved by love. And we've done a lot of things in this term to encourage you to love. One of which I believe was the most significant was having you fill in a little card with the name of somebody that you will target with your love and prayers. It does not have to stop here. Please continue. I trust that you found it easier and easier to love people with God's love. Not our own concoction and efforts, but God's love. We've given you all kinds of helps and reminders. And this morning we want to do one final one. I'm wearing it. It's a little pin badge, just with the heart, and it says, moved by love. And we encourage you to take one this morning. We're going to hand them out to you, I think, right now. And we want to ask you, pin it on your jacket or your shirt on your bag, anywhere you can, pin it. And for two reasons. Number one, that as you look at it, you will remember your mission is to love like God loved us. To love wherever you go, everywhere, anytime, is the right time to show God's love. And secondly, we are trusting that this little pin might provoke some questions. And that people might ask, you know, what's that? And just give you an opportunity to say, I'm supposed to be reminded to tell you God loves you. And don't be ashamed to do that. You will get questions and comments about this little pin. Use it to unashamedly tell people, Jesus loves you. Don't think it is cheesy or funny. Please believe me that people are hungry to know that they're loved by God. And just say it wherever you get the opportunity. I trust that these little badges will go a long way to remind us to love and to give us open doors with people who may ask, what is that? Why are you wearing that? Where does that come from? What does that stand for? You know all those questions. Don't be ashamed. Love freely. As they're handing out the badges for you, I would love for you to keep on giving your attention to the message. I want to make a very strong statement. You are called to love, not to hate. You are called to love, not to hate. We each have to embrace that call as a call from God. Now I can tell you with great confidence this morning that that is biblical and that comes from the heart of God. And before you embrace or look even for other callings, am I, am I called to preach? Am I called to this? Know this. You are called to love, not to hate. You are called to love. You're welcome as you receive your badge even, to pin it on today. And if you battle, ask the person next to you to pin it on for you. And let it become a moment where you feel and sense and accept that I'm deputized. You know, in the, in the Western movies, you know, the guys get a star. You know, and then you become a deputy or a sheriff. Well, you are appointed by God to love. You're called to love. I came across something very interesting, so eloquently put by our former president, Nelson Mandela. And he put something in writing about love, a statement.
that I would repeat to you this morning. And before I put it on, I actually want to remind you to just keep on praying for him. And join me right now, just in a, in a sentence of prayer. Lord, praying for Nelson Mandela. We are thankful, Father, for his incredible role in this nation. To keep us in a place of peace and not of bloodshed. In a place of forgiveness, not hate. And Lord, we pray that your peace will surround him, that you give grace to him, and pour your love over him, Lord, continuously, in Jesus' name. Now, Nelson Mandela said the following. Tell them you're busy. <laughs> he said this. No one is born hating another person because of their color of their skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. Isn't that incredible words? <clears throat> Referring for a moment again to fathers. I want to say to you, I believe in being a strong male. That means when we move with our families, and especially if you've got children, you... You uh, want to show them, you know, to be a, if it's a boy, a real man, etc. But I would like to also encourage dads to know that what you teach your children is what they will live out. Not through your words only, but through your attitude, the way you do life. And when I see children do funny things, teenagers go on the rampant and beat people up and all those kind of things, I wonder many times... Not for long, where they get that example from. And I want to say this maybe as a shift to some dads, especially as male role models. Just this word. Please listen carefully. And no, I come from a background, which many of you didn't know, but I did boxing and karate and all kinds of things. And Joe and I wrestled, uh, but he always won. But anyway, um, <laughs> I know about that. I played rugby. Woo, woo. I did all those things. But I've learned this one thing. Please listen to me, every male in this place. To love like God loved takes more courage than any of that other stuff. Pray to God that you teach your son, sir, that. That his manhood is not in his fists or in his big mouth, or in his, you know, that, that, that swag, you know. I'm calling dads to a place and males to a place of joining the army of God to teach people, young people especially, that it takes more courage to love like God loved than anything else in life. God help us if we breed a generation that become courageous when they've had a few wines or beers. And we applaud that. And where they become courageous in pride. Yes, Francois, you're strong this morning. I am. Because we call to a different life and a different standard where we teach that the greatest courage comes from love. And hopefully you'll see how that flows in this message today. Strong word. And by the way, I don't know where all the ladies were there. You should have applauded about three times by now. Because that's the kind of males you all want. Mm, thank you. Folks, God's love is what lights up our lives. It's really His Love that brings his light, that causes one's face and heart to light up. And when you've received God's love, you shine in this dark world 
with that same love. Just make the connection between love and shining, and you'll understand presently. Jesus tasked us to shine openly. Could you please say the word openly? Did you hear that it came quite strong? It didn't say openly. Yeah, openly. No. Openly. Thank you. Jesus challenges and calls us to shine openly with his love. It's because God's love changes the world around us. It changes people. It's the greatest force of change in this universe. And so I believe part of the purpose at the end of this term is to cause you to have a courage to love like never before. That you will love unashamed and unafraid. And that you will love boldly in Jesus' name. Please join me in reading our text this morning from Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. And I'm reading from the NIV. That stands for New International Version. I've, I've found out that not, not everybody knows all these things we put up here. NIV, it's a, one of the translations of the Bible. Jesus was preaching about the Beatitudes. He's, he's preaching about the attitude of God in real life, that we bless rather than curse. And as he drew to the end of the Beatitudes, he came to this statement. He said, in the same way, let your light shine before others. Remember that word, before others. That they may see your good works, your good deeds. And then this important part, and glorify your Father in heaven. The first point I would like to make a few statements on is this. Love the God kind of love, agape love, is an action word. It's an action word. It's not just something that floats around. God's love towards us may start with words as he, he promises to love us and says that he loves us. But listen to this. It ends with a deed. And that deed was the death of Jesus on the cross. The final thing that sealed his love forever. God's love starts with a word but ends with a deed. And we are to follow that pattern with dedication. That we cannot only speak his love but we must show it. And sometimes the words only come after the deeds. Many times that's how I found it works in this life. People won't listen when you say, God loves you, God loves you, Jesus loves you. Don't say, yeah, we heard that before. But if your actions speak of that love consistently, finally their ears open and their hearts open to receive that precious statement. The Apostle James teaches us that faith without works is dead. I would like to add to that that love without action is powerless. Faith without works is dead. Love without action is powerless. Godly loves always urges us to act. Godly love urges you to act. It's one of the ways in which you can know that it's not just an emotion, but it's God kind of love working in you. Folks, expressing the love of God should be kept as practical as possible. I want to refer again to the Good Samaritan, and I will do so more in this sermon. But it's not so difficult. You don't always have to go on a major planning expedition before you love with the love of God. There's opportunity every day. And yes, sometimes it can be more intricate and you need to plan it, but, but many times it's so simple. And it should always center around showing mercy and kindness and forgiveness. Please remember that this action of showing his love is never deserved. It's never deserved. But it needs to be directed by God. In other words, you and I don't have the final say in who we want to love in his name or not. 
It's His love that He wants to channel through us. And we are to obey beyond our feelings and our judgments. Oh, aren't you glad that God loved you so freely? And then in the same way, let us love. Let God's love guide your actions every day. I want to say something about open love. You say, well, I've not heard that term before. Open love. What is open love? Open love. Well, all I mean by that is that the one thing I know about the love of God is that it's not hidden. God's love was never, ever a secret. It's open out there. And God declared His love for this world, and then He put it very publicly on display through the life and ultimately the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. You couldn't go more public than a cross on top of a hill for everyone to see. And I trust that you will join me to let the cross remind you every time when you come to the challenge of loving, say maybe, oh, I don't know who's looking, and that everybody could see the cross on the hill. God chose to put His love on display for you and me. And we should follow His example. You and I, as this scripture with the words of Jesus confirms are to let the light of His love shine through us. Shine through us. As that scripture says, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. I I simply make this statement. Without putting God's love on display, you and I, without putting God's love on display, there will be nothing for others to see. May I ask you this morning a very penetrating question. When people look at you and me, what do they see? What do they see? And I must tell you, there's there's deep challenges going on in my own heart. And I'm saying, Lord, I I don't want people just to see that I'm bright, that I'm I'm clever, that I'm smart, that I'm this, that I'm that. Those are not wrong. But oh, how I long more and more in life that the final thing people will see about me is a resemblance to the love of God. Wouldn't that be a great life ambition? Wouldn't that cause a love revolution if we all dedicate ourselves to that kind of ambition in life? Wow. Let's love openly. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds. Simple. It's not very deep, actually, but very powerful. So I thought a lot about this showing of God's love through my life and yours. And I I, I make my next point to say something about love and courage. Because I've realized to put God's love on display calls for quite a bit of courage. No mistake about that. So love and courage. I I, I say to you very clearly today that it takes courage to love with the love of God. To put the love of God on display calls for courage, simple courage. The wonderful news is that the love of God gives us that courage. His love is amazing. You see, the problem when it comes to showing the love of God is that there's there's always that fear, that nagging little thing that it might be rejected or misunderstood or taken advantage of. Of course. Um, and, And if you're a man... You're also a little bit afraid that people might think you're a wimp. Because this love thing is a bit mushy, isn't it? (laughs) I can imagine that all of us have wrestled with questions like, what will people think of me when I do this? Or uh, what will they say if I do that? That's normal. But we are not called to stay with normal. We are called to love supernaturally. When you are faced with these kind of questions and fears of 
will the love that I offer or the deed I show be misinterpreted or misused or rejected? Just a reminder that when Jesus went to the cross, there was no guarantee that his awesome deed of love and the offering of forgiveness will be accepted by anyone. And the truth is, you still find many people today that learn about Jesus Christ and his death on the cross and still choose to reject it. God and his love, Jesus our Savior is rejected by many people still. And so let it cause you to rise up and say, if he's walked that road, I'm also willing. I'll run the risk. If people spurn the love I show or reject it, it's not my business. Key for your continued freedoms, yet these words, don't take it personally. If you love in his name, it's him they will have to deal with ultimately. And you need to come to a place of Christian spiritual maturity to do that. And I trust that you will all grow to such a place. Please, I earnestly ask you today, don't let the threat of possible rejection or disappointment stop you from stepping out to show his love. Aren't you glad that Jesus didn't stop halfway? said, oh, well, I don't know, they, might not, they may not accept this. He took the risk. Thank God he did. So don't you stop. The truth is that God's love will help you overcome all the fear and risk and all of that that the enemy would love to use to intimidate you not to show his love to this world. Don't let him succeed. I just want to extol again to you the power of his love. Please read with me 1 John chapter 4 and verse 18 from the NIV. John writes this wonderful revelation from God. He says, there is no fear in love. And that love is agape love. It's not any kind of love. It's not feeling, mushy love, eros, anything else. It's God's love. He says, but perfect love, the love of God, drives out all fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. And the one who fears is not made perfect in love. In other words, haven't received, hasn't received all the love from God that they should. So it says, if you are still fearful, oh, I don't know, will I be rejected? Can I, can I dare to love in his name or whatever? Just this one thing. Go get more of God's love. Ask him to baptize you with his love. Because where his perfect love is, in its fullness, it drives out all fear. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, thank God for his love. I want to take it a step further this morning and say to you that godly love, God kind of love, agape love, enables you and me with supernatural courage. Supernatural courage. Now, if that's not a picture of courage, I don't know what is. How do you like that? Eh? I mean, that kitty cat deserves a medal. And I thought just to give you a bit of humor right in the middle here. Because many times we feel like that, that we're parading God's love here and there's like... <laughs> and it could convince you to step back, but it shouldn't. Because if God's love is evident in you and it's experienced in your heart, then you will experience supernatural courage like that cat. And you'll parade in this world and show it. Unashamed, unafraid. Where do we get that from? Well, I, I want to remind you just about the role and function of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit aids us greatly to fulfill our calling in this life to be witnesses for God. And in Acts 1, and verse um, 8, we read about Jesus saying to the disciples, go and wait in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high so that you will be my witnesses. Now, actually, that's quite a word because it takes it to, to what we know in English as martyrs. And, and please notice, it's not 
to witness. It is to be a witness. Now, that's a different thing from witnessing. When I'm saying to people from a soapbox, um, you all sinners, come to Jesus, repent and be saved, then I'm witnessing. When I love like He loves, I give forgiveness. I show kindness. I don't judge, but I give mercy. Then I am being a witness. And it says that the Holy Spirit will come upon us to give us power to do this. It also goes on in Romans 5 and verse 5. Paul says, it's the Holy Spirit that pours the love of God out in our hearts. So the Holy Spirit is there to give you power and is there to keep you topped up and filled with the love of God. Why? So that you can be a witness of His love, His grace, His forgiveness in this world. So strengthen your partnership with the Holy Spirit. I just thought of it that Jesus faced the agony and the shame of the cross because he was empowered by the courage that agape supplied, the God kind of love. Back to the Good Samaritan. Remember when I tried to take you through the story and say there was some real danger next to that road. One man had already been robbed and left for dead by robbers. And already a priest walked past and a Levite and said, ooh, whoa, ooh, this is a bit dangerous. We, you know, we, 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 we can't do this. But the good Samaritan, what, a, what an amazing example, putting his own safety second to express loving care, stopped at an unknown man. And as I said, he acted with divine impulsiveness and just showed kindness. As all of us pass people by daily that's in need of God's love. Oh, I pray that you will truly be empowered by the courage of agape to stop and obey the urge and urgency of God's love right there in your heart and show it in whatever form suits. Let the love of God fill you with courage to love. Now I feel I, I need to stop here and just ask you if, if you with me need some deliverance from fear and shame and disappointment that's hindered us from loving in His name. Let's ask for it right now. Let's ask God to come and take that fear away and let His love triumph over all kinds of disappointments and shame and fear. Will you join me in a word of prayer? And then I'm going to wrap the sermon up. Father, I, I pray with all of your wonderful people here today, your deputies, and I pray, Lord, that you will deliver us by your love from all fear and maybe previous bad experiences, from all shame and anything that hindered us, Lord, up till today, from showing your love. Father, we thank you for your love that's flooding our lives right now and brings a freedom to love like you've loved. Thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Last point I would like to share with you, and I've entitled that last point, daily love, daily life. Daily love is needed for daily love, for life rather. I, I read through our announcements and I just saw the call for volunteers again. And as I've said, to love in this world does not necessarily mean you have to go on an exhaustive planning and, and think about the, it, it's so simple. And if you don't know where to start serving, Go to the announcement sheet and, and just check. There's, there's so many places where you can volunteer to serve. It's easy. And please respond to that. And do it with all your heart. I 
believe that the language of love is spoken through daily appropriate actions. The language of love is spoken through daily appropriate actions. And all people need the love of God. Folks, please don't look at the outside picture that people present to you. All people need the love of God from the rich to the poor, and from the famous to the forgotten. Everybody needs God's love. You and I need to see ourselves daily going on a mission to show God's love. May this little pin help you to remember that. And remember that the expressing of God's love is never dependent on a person deserving it. It's about obeying the Holy Spirit and letting Him love through you and let His love go where He directs and let us obey. I encourage you to use the right language. Therefore, we remind you again about the love languages and understanding the love languages of others can help you reach many hearts, especially people you work with and you rub shoulders with every day. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you discern the language in which to love others. And so just quickly, those couple of icons again, the five love languages identified by author Gary Chapman. If you want to buy the book, great book. And he says, different people have different combinations of love languages. Some thrive with words of affirmation. If you just, just say to somebody, thank you, job well done, or an honest, uh, not, 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 not actually uh, saying something that just puffs people up, but, but saying, Yo, you look good today and mean it. Some people open up and blossom under that. Others just come alive when they receive a little gift. And it doesn't need to be a Ferrari. Although I just remind you that it is my birthday on <laughs> Wednesday. No, I'm just joking. But little things, really. That's why we try to encourage you. If you find out somebody's love language is receiving gifts, in, a little chocolate can open up a huge door for you to begin to speak to them. And finally speak to them about Jesus. Some people love language is quality time. So offering for somebody to have a cup of coffee with them and spend 10 or 15 minutes or, or just listen to them, listen to them, actually opens up all the doors for you. It's their love language. Some other people respond to acts of service when you offer to do something for them. Maybe make a cup of coffee or, or tea or, or uh, you know, I, I, I don't, this is not bragging things, but I like doing this. I like giving an, uh, through acts of service. And I remember when, uh, I'm not going to tell you where and when, but I, I've done this and please, now it's past this, so I, I think I've gotten my reward. But I've taken a whole bunch of guys' dirty boots and I've shined it for them and put it next to their beds. The next morning they wake up, their shoes have been cleaned. Simple. What's, and you think, well, that doesn't feel spiritual. But the response, people still remember that. The, the thing I'm still remembered most for in the UK when I go visiting our networks there and, and being with our people there, it's amazing, our family there, is, is not my great preaching and somebody's blind eyes, hallelujah, that open up. But well, I keep on remembering that once at a conference, I was there as the speaker, but nobody knew me, and I helped carry some people's suitcases to their rooms. And I'm not telling you this to him. I want to tell you how simple it is. I, it's like years back, still when they introduced me, they say, this is the guy that carried the suitcases. Can't believe that, 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 he, he, that it's unbelievable. And open doors for the love of God to flow. Acts of service. Don't let it be beyond you. Simple. Look for opportunities. And for some people that presses all their buttons and they experience it as love. And lastly, physical touch. And there's so many people with orphan spirits in our world that so love starved. Just a smile. Just a hug. Just putting your hand on somebody's hand and squeezing it. Uh, just... just we, you don't overdo this. You can get in trouble. You can smack you. But just, it's actually easy to love in his name. But 
May the Holy Spirit guide you. Begin to be sensitive beyond what you like and what you prefer. And check people out and, and ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, what's this one's love language? And, and, and then do it. The right love language at the right time to the right person unlocks their heart for the message of Jesus Christ. Finally, I want to read the scripture to you. From Colossians 3, verse 12 to 14 in the message. It's like a summary of everything we've said over these past weeks. And it starts with these words. So, chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Not dress what you want to be dressed with. Dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place. Mm. Quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And then comes the closing words. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Isn't that beautiful? God spoke to me in these times, in these weeks. And he said this to me, Francois, have more faith in my love expressed through your simple obedience to me. It carries more transformational power than a thousand words that you can eloquently express. That's what God said to me. Have faith in the transformational power of my love through you when you obey to act in my love. Simple said, it can change lives. Believe that your acts of love and kindness and mercy will preach a stronger message than all the words that you can speak. Join me in that conviction. Have faith in the transformational power of His love in action. I want to remind you in closing of His words that we've just read in Colossians 3. You were chosen by God for this life of love. Mm -hmm. Live to love. Live to love. It's the best thing you can dedicate your life to. And love boldly, empowered personally, and motivated personally by His love to show and tell the world that He loves them. Folks, that verse that was our, or is our text verse for today from Matthew 5 and verse 16 ends about, and glorify your Father in heaven. That's our ultimate desire, is to live to God's glory. Let me assure you, if you dedicate your life to love in His name, you will glorify Him. That is for sure. That's what we live for, is that God will be glorified through our lives. You are the message of His love to this world. A shining beacon of hope for every day. I pray that the Holy Spirit will give you a baptism of boldness to act out God's love. One line prayer. Pray with me. Please. Lord, we give our lives to love like you love us. Amen. Amen. Happy Father's Day.